I'm curious about here is why do some healthcare practitioners have concerns over the nutritional adequacy of plant-based diets? And is there that concern merited? Yeah. So this is, this is one of my favorite things because this is kind of a peek into the, like the backside of how we're trained. Cause I think that the concern a hundred percent comes down to training, um, in most mm. cases. Okay. So when dietitians are, are trained, um, because we, you know, we're, we're in the room with people, we're assessing their diet on the fly. We're trained to look for foods that are high in a specific nutrient to tell if things are adequate. Right. So especially when we take the RD exam, we're like, okay, what foods are high in zinc? What foods are high in protein? What foods are high in calcium? Right. So yep. we're trained to, you know, when we're looking at somebody's diet recall, be like, okay, I see this food that's high, this food that's high, this food that's high. They're probably good. Okay. And I think that doctors too, a lot of, if they have any nutritional training, a lot of times that information is coming from the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics or from dietitians who are trained that way. So right. <laughs> what, what ends up happening is that when, when a lot of health professionals look at a plant-based diet and they see foods being taken out that are high in a nutrient, like protein is a good example, then they go, oh no, then we need to get another nutrient or another food that's high in that nutrient or they're going to be deficient, Right. Which is like, if you're working within the standard American diet, that method of like applying, like like scrutinizing a diet actually works really well, but it totally <laughs> yeah. falls apart when you're talking about a plant-based diet, because a lot of times the view from the nutrition community is that things like fruits and vegetables are good sources of fiber, carbohydrates, vitamin C, and that's it, <laughs> right? Because people don't eat a lot of them normally. Right. So it's like yeah. if, if I'm going through someone's diet recall, right, and they're they're having like a breakfast sandwich and then they're having a second sandwich for, for lunch and then at dinner time they're having like half a cup of broccoli. That broccoli is not really taking you very far. You know what I mean? Um, but tongue, as, absolutely. It's, just, it's not enough. It's not enough volume to like really do something. Yeah. Um, so, and you and I know that people who are on a whole food plant-based diet are not eating just a half cup of broccoli. Like that's not happening. They sure are not. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> so, so I think a lot of those foods just get ignored in terms of their nutritional contribution because people don't eat a lot of them. And so when a dietitian is faced with someone on a plant-based diet and they're eating like lots of, like their diet is mostly these foods, like their training is like, ah, what do I do with this? I don't yeah. like, you know, they don't know. And so then they get, they're like, well, I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah it's just it's new to them it's not even yeah. like it's like wow i don't even, I don't even know what, what's what are you going to actually get they have to go and really do like you said go do some work yeah. to learn okay wait a minute let me put this stuff into a nutrition login software and understand what is the you exactly. know what does this food consist of and right it's just new it's new it, it's just new it's not that they're they're wrong at all it's just that mm -hmm. the framework under which a lot of these nutrition professionals are trained is like not not really as useful in plant-based nutrition and you know me going through training and me working with other dietitians like my experience there is zero training in plant-based nutrition which i feel like is wild because it's such a growing trend and more and more people are interested in it like i had a when i was an intern we so when you're when you're training and then when you're in your internship for nutrition you shadow a bunch of dietitians and this right. became super apparent to me when I was doing training. So like, I remember, um, I was shadowing a dietitian and somebody was like, I'm interested in a plant-based diet. And they're like, well, you know, if you, you have to drink three cups of soy milk every day, or you're going to become calcium deficient. And I'm like, what? I mean, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, that's, a, there's, a, there's a few problems there. But number one is yeah. the willingness to just say something without having actually like done research. Cause that's not yeah. actually true. Yeah. So like, where could that come from? You didn't really actually look into it. You're just willing to just say things. That's, 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 no. that's like number one. Absolutely. Well, they want a one-to-one -one replacement, right? So if you're taking out dairy, what are you replacing it with? If you're taking mm -hmm. out meat, what are you replacing it with? Right. Mm -hmm. That's how they're thinking. Another really good, like blind spot I found is like oatmeal. A lot of people eat oatmeal for breakfast. Um, and I have never sat in on a session with another dietitian who didn't advise people to add protein because there's no protein in oatmeal. Like <laughs> not one time this is my biggest pet peeve in nutrition. Like they'll be like, Hmm, you're having, you know, a cup and a half of oatmeal every morning, 
but we're concerned you're not getting the protein in there. So like, let's like, can you cook it with milk? Can you add an egg on the side to get protein? Um, but like if somebody was having like a hard boiled egg and a banana, they wouldn't say anything. Um, they'd be like, Oh, that's fine. That's balanced. Um, but like a, like half cup of dried oatmeal has the same amount of protein as an egg. So I, I'm like, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> it's one of the, it's very solid protein rich food. I mean, yeah. all whole plant foods are pretty good. Protein exactly. But that one in particular is like, you know, even better than some others. Exactly. Exactly. And I have, again, I have seen this happen with like seven different dietitians. Like it's super common for them to recommend adding protein to oatmeal because there's no protein. Um, when there is, it's just that the training says, oatmeal is carbs, not protein. Right. So, um, yeah. you know, it's not that, that dietitians are, are bad. I mean, they're highly specialized, highly trained, highly knowledgeable, but if you're having it, if you have concerns about whether your diet is adequate in certain things, you know, go to a dietitian that actually knows something about plant-based nutrition. That's like key. Um, because we Absolutely. all have our different specialties. It's true. And somebody who's willing um, so, to at least learn, at least somebody who's willing to understand. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of RDs out there who, yeah, they had that conventional training, but, and they may mm -hmm. still believe in some of that. That's fine. But then they also like, mm -hmm. okay, no, I, I've learned about the facts of how plant-based diet can be done well. And they could at least speak to that rather than somebody who's like, just literally blanketly saying things that just aren't even true. Like doesn't even add up. Like your oatmeal example, it doesn't add up. That's literally a lack of knowledge, period, yeah. end of story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. And there are tons of dietitians out there that are super knowledgeable in plant-based nutrition. Um, it's just, you know, making sure that you're getting somebody who, who fits what you're trying to do is important. I mean, you do that with, with doctors anyway, you know, if you have some, um, genetic disorder, you're not going to go to a family medicine practitioner to get help with that genetic disorder. Right. For example, we, we, right. you, you need to find someone who's going to help you on the things that you want to help with and get someone who's really knowledgeable about that specific thing. Absolutely. Is there, um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there might be a little bit of an issue when it comes to training that RDs receive in the fact that like corporations or large scale companies have influenced that training. I think, you know, there's examples oh. of you know, dietetic conferences being, oh uh, being sponsored gosh. by you may, maybe McDonald's or something. Maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, that, that is a huge problem. Um, huge problem. I have never been so every state has their own little chapter of the academy and like um, they have annual conferences. I have never been to a conference that was not sponsored by the dairy council. <laughs> wow. I have not. <laughs> so like yeah. I went to, when I was um, living in Massachusetts, I went to the Massachusetts chapter um, annual conference sponsored by the dairy council. They had a guy who worked for the dairy council come in and give this whole speech on how plant-based diets are not eco-friendly. And he wow. presented no evidence at all, like no actual science. It was crazy to me. And they're like passing out bottles of milk. It was just what wild. Like when I was an intern at, at um, Massachusetts General Hospital, a required field trip that I could not opt out of was to go to this dairy farm that was like a tourist attraction. So it was like the best possible scenario for a dairy farm ever, right? It was like very <laughs> idyllic. And then they had a dietitian who worked for the dairy council talking about all of the benefits of dairy and how wonderful it is. And, and like any concerns about dairy aren't a big deal. She, there's one part where I almost just like walked out because she was talking about the checkoff program that ended up putting more cheese on pizza and cheese into crust as like a huge triumph for, right. for health and calcium. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's like a public health I'm... crisis. And you're a dietitian. Seriously. I don't know. It was crazy. It's crazy. crazy. But aside from that, so dietitians have to get um, a certain number of continuing education credits every every uh, five years. So we have to be doing like webinars and conferences all the time. Um, and dietitians are uh, renownedly quite broke because it's expensive to become a dietitian and the pay is not great. Um, so <laughs> basically, the, we have to find all of this continuing education. And this is the biggest thing that I... I I find is like a yikes moment. They're the only free continuing education is coming from industry. Wow. wow. And a lot of dietitians are only going to do what's free. So like yeah, it's coming sense. from the pork board. It's coming from the dairy council. It's coming from individual brands. So like Siggy's yogurt does a ton actually of wow. free continuing education. 
Nestle, wow. Abbott, like all of these food companies. So as dietitians are going out into the world, you know, and they're doing hours and hours and hours and hours of these, these lectures, they're all basically telling you, no, animal products are great. Like they're awesome for your health. Like, don't worry about saturated fat. Don't worry about cholesterol. Don't worry about any of this stuff. And it's like, you know, that's, that's how they're continuing to, to learn in the professional sphere. And I find that hugely problematic. Like it just literally comes down to education and knowledge. And it's like, once you look into the facts and you start to see, read the papers that you're talking about, just getting exposed, it's all of a sudden a whole new world opens up, but just people don't know about it. Like that's, that's like the ultimate thing here. And it's just a whole system that just continues to unfold. And that's really, that's really the biggest issue here. Absolutely. And, and the crazy thing is, is that, so the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics, they send out an email with all of this recent nutrition research every single week. I get an email every week with like a laundry list of new research. And in that, it's like consistently plant-based diets are awesome for this. Plant-based diets are awesome for that. New study says plant-based diets are great for this. Like, like the research that's coming out is like, I even from the academy that I'm getting wind of is like predominantly saying a plant-based diet is the way to go. Um, and yet the academy is not actively promoting it. <laughs> So I, I, I mean, I'm so baffled by that. Yeah. The, the conflicts of interest are uh, quite evident. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, um, no, go ahead. Oh, so, so I'm just saying like when it comes to these concerns, like if you look up, you know, plant-based diet deficiency, you'll get a lot of articles from dietitians or doctors that have like, this is a nutrition, nutrient of concern. This is a nutrient of concern. This is a nutrient of concern. And it's important to keep in mind that all of those are actually theoretical. Um, so like iron is, is consistently considered a nutrient concern, but that's based off of this, this, um, this training. That's where that, that's why that is a nutrient of concern is because of the way that, that these professionals are trained. Um, yeah. So if you're like, when you look at data of deficiency rates, like, and like functional deficiency. So, you know, for iron, if, if you are deficient in iron, the, the effect of that is anemia and people on a plant-based diet, you know, generally don't have higher risk of anemia than people who aren't. Um, and so it's important to keep that in mind. So like, um, for example, I, I went to a seminar that on using plant-based diets for kids and the person who was leading it had this whole laundry list of potential deficiencies that kids could have. And it was interesting because during the Q and a session, someone asked, well, is there, have there been any studies done on deficiency rates in kids um, who are following a plant-based diet? And she's like, well, you know, I searched high and I searched low and I didn't find a single study that showed that they are more likely to have deficiencies. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so then why are we talking about this? You know? <laughs> wow. Wow. That is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So again, I am seeing B12 deficiencies, vitamin D deficiencies, anemia. And let me tell you, none of these people are on a plant-based diet. So everyone should be concerned. I don't think that right. people on a plant-based diet necessarily need to be more concerned, but I know outside of doing some supplementation that's necessary, like B12 and vitamin D. It's always funny, Natalie, how people are following a standard American diet. Like they're just not <laughs> even thinking of what they're eating. And they have zero concerns about their nutrition yeah. at that point. And then they start eating a healthy diet. I'm going to do this plant-based thing. I'm going to eat all these new foods and fruits and vegetables. And now they're concerned. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Kind of funny. It, 